Hello everyone, welcome to The Maple Table, my name's Nathaniel. This is a channel where we discuss lore around tabletop role-playing games such as Starfinder, Werewolf the Apocalypse. If that's something you're interested in, let me know by hitting that like button. Today's video is coming at the request of one of my viewers who has asked to see the Dromada. If you ever wanted to play a race that was super fast, very skittish, and by super fast I mean like operative fast, operative fast with jump jet fast. Then the Dramata is the race for you. Did I mention that they look like camels and they use moaning as a self-defense mechanism? Can you imagine? Ugh. Oh crap, we better get out of here. So what stats and abilities do you get when you're looking at taking the Dramata as your race? For starters, you're gonna get plus two dex, plus two wisdom, and minus two charisma. All that shy skittishness really does play off in the character stats as well. You're also going to get a whopping two hit points, and I'm going to tell you why in a little bit. Dramatas are not big, but they're not exactly small either. So you're going to be that medium size. You're also going to have the magical beast property. A Dramata will also gain three abilities that are unique. The first one being alert the herd. Remember that I was saying the Dramata can moan as a self-defense mechanism? Ugh! This is it. Once per day, whenever there is danger about, a Dramata can moan, and not in the sense that you're thinking, it's a deep guttural sound, even though I just made jokes about that earlier. Allies within 50 feet who can hear this cry for help? Alert? Alarm? Will get a plus four morale bonus to their initiative checks. The Dramata will also gain an ability called Bolt. This is a crazy one. When a Dramata takes a full run action, they can move up to five times their land speed, and they can change direction when they're running their butts off. Furthermore, they are so good at running away that they can also cross difficult terrain with no additional checks. It does still require the extra movement when you're figuring out how to cross the difficult terrain, but a Dramata, they could just run over that. They will also have dark vision with a 60 foot range, and they will also have low light vision. A Dramata will also gain an ability, I guess? I wouldn't really call it an ability. I would look at this as a penalty. The Dramata will gain the savory ability. That's right, a Dramata is a tasty morsel. If you are a Dramata and you have been bitten by an enemy creature, you will take a negative two AC check to that creature for one week because it just enjoys your flavor so much. I also mentioned that the Dramata is fast. You will have a land speed of 40 feet. So let's talk a little bit about the Dramata, where they come from, and why they are the way that they are. Very quickly, if you're finding some value out of the video today, then please hit that like button. Let's me know that you did. Real quick before we move on, if you're finding some value out of this today, please consider making a donation to help support my work and the channel. You can do so through Anchor or through Patreon. Dramata are bipedal mammals, and they hail from the planet and depending on how you pronounce it, it will be called Dramaritea or Dramarisha. They're a camel-looking species, except for if camels had independent eyes that could look about. A Dramata will average five feet tall-ish, and they will usually weigh about 200 pounds. There's some meat on those bones, and as we've already discussed, it's tasty meat. You may notice that the Dramata have what the Alien Archives 3 calls Ungulagrade legs. Now there is a slight difference between Ungulagrade and Digitigrade legs. Ungulagrade legs walk on the tippy toes, Digitigrade legs walk on most of their feet but not the soles, like cats and dogs. Now their arms do actually have fingers and dew claws, which allows them to manipulate tools and use them functionally as hands. They have long necks, stubby eye stalks, and a very wide field of vision and their fur will come in various shades of reds and browns. Now on their home planet, their species was actually the most populous. They apparently like to get it on a lot too. This was a problem for the Dromeda race as they were not the apex predator of this planet. In fact, their planet actually has many larger, more hungry and vicious carnivores than the Dromedas. This would have prompted the Dromeda ancestors to form tight-knit communities 
or herds, if you will. And this is how the Dromeda learn to protect themselves. And it also means that in Starfinder today, the Dromeda value family. They value their society and their herds. Everybody is very tight knit. And these herds would alert everyone in them to the first sign of danger as soon as anyone noticed it with their moaning defense. Ugh. I'm probably gonna laugh every time I say that simply because I am a child. I am a grown man child. After the herds had been alerted through these deep moans, <laughs> there I go again, Ugh. the herd would run to safety. Throughout the Dromeda history, as they evolved and as technology became more prevalent in their society, they still retained their herd-like mentality and some of their skittishness. It, it just never left them. This has actually served them very well as they have joined the galactic community. And while they are no longer actively hunted for food, there are some evil species or evil races out there who still seek that special savory flavor that only Dromeda meat can give you. Dromeda do everything with a family or with friends or just in a group. Maybe they don't even like the people that they're with, but at least they're in a group. Dromeda are also herbivores. Even when they're eating, they do this in a group. Half of the group eats, the other half stands watch. Then the shift change happens, the other half who was on lookout gets to eat, and the ones who have eaten now become the lookouts. A typical Dromeda home will be a single story home, fairly large to accommodate the large amounts of family that have to live there. And it will also have lots of exits. And there will usually be many of them in one building, so having lots of exits is a necessity. On the Dromeda homeworld, you're gonna find a lot of corporations. And usually these offices or these corporations will have open office concepts. This works well to the Dromeda way of community. And these corporations will usually be in the business of plant-based synthetic foods, plant-based meat substitutes, textiles. They're just not really big meat eaters. A young Dromeda will train itself in skills that would be useful to the herd. The more services you can provide to the herd, the less the herd has to rely on outside influence, less danger that the herd is exposed to. This is the mentality anyways. Young Dromeda who are curious about the world will actually go out in small groups called huddles. These groups will go out, explore, see what the world has to offer, and flee at the first sign of danger. And then they will go back, tell the herd what they saw, warn them of the dangers of the outside world, and promptly not leave anymore. Even with their skittishness, you still might get the odd Dromeda who wants to go out into a densely populated area and live there among other civilizations. And when they do, they will still usually be in small groups, and those groups will rely heavily on delivery services for everything. Think Uber Eats, but in Absalom Station. And because the Dromeda are so particular about their security and the safety of, well, their species, they took this mentality with them when corporations started becoming a thing on the planet. And they've even developed a very special suitcase, specifically for their corporate endeavors, to protect it from prying eyes, corporate espionage, whatever. It's probably one of the most secure suitcases that you can get in Starfinder, and we'll talk about that soon. Leadership in the Dromeda society is not looked upon very favorably. When you are a leader, you are a target, and thus you are exposed to danger. That doesn't mean that Andromeda will shirk off leadership duties entirely, it just means that they would rather avoid it if they could. Crime is also not something that's very common in Dromeda society, because the punishment for crime is exile. And exile means death, because you are alone in the wilderness with everything that wants to eat you. And because everything is a threat, Andromeda's trust is very hard to earn. But once you've earned it, you will have one of the most loyal companions that you could ever ask for. While a Dromeda mercenary is extremely rare, because it means they would have to overcome their fear of quite literally everything, they do make excellent bodyguards because of their powerful legs. They're able to reposition their targets rather quickly. They also make great first responders because they can move so friggin' fast. And being a lookout is just built into their genetic nature, so they're good at that too. Now let's quickly talk about the Dromeda Clutch. If you're still watching, thank you so much for watching, and consider this a reward for sticking around to the end of the video. A Dromeda Clutch is a small but sleek 
designed briefcase that can hold four items of a negligible bulk. That would be either a bulk of L or 0.1. It can hold up to four items of that. The clutch is actually a magical item and it is sealed with a magic keyword. Once it's been sealed with the keyword, anything that's inside of that briefcase cannot be seen through x-ray. If it was a magical item, detect magic won't even let you know that there was something magical inside of this briefcase. It's even protected from arcane sight. That doesn't mean that they're infallible. They do have a physical lock that can be picked, but it is considered of a good quality. I think the Dromeda is a unique race. I haven't seen this in any other game where there's literally an ability that makes you more tasty for your predators. I can see using Dromeda as NPCs as a messenger courier service, probably in a well-policed, well-protected area like Absalom Station, for example. I can also see them being used very effectively as player characters, either starting a game with some back history with another player, integrating them into a story would be super easy. And the thought of a bunch of skittish looking camels running a corporation, the thought is just funny to me. So I will probably try to work that into one of my games. Tell me in the comments below what you think of the Dromeda. Will you look at playing one? Have you ever played one before? Up on the screen, there will be a playlist of other Starfinder races that I have done. So please check those out. My name's Nathaniel. You've been watching The Maple Table. Thank you so much for your subscription. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.